Welcome to today's pattern. Uh, I'm going to actually be tying a really small micro nymph today. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, it's tied to a sort of a pattern that means that you're not too shy about losing it, so it doesn't take like 45 minutes to put one together. But these sort of small nymphs, the very subtle patterns, it's really useful to have them as a string to your bow, particularly for winter fishing, but also for clear water venues as well. Have you been thinking about tying flies, but don't know where to start? We've got a free series of video tutorials that might interest you. A lot of YouTube videos jump straight in with the tying and there's really no time for a beginner to get a handle on what's going on. So we've created a series of individual step-by-step -step videos that cover the basics of fly tying. In each video you'll learn a different skill at your own pace. So for instance, we'll teach you how to tie on a thread on the hook. We'll teach how to tie in materials on the hook. We'll teach how to dub materials onto the thread and we'll cover several ways of whip finishing to finish the fly at the end of the tying. Once you've got a handle on these basics, you'll be able to follow along with YouTube fly tying videos like the one you're about to see. If this sounds like something that might interest you, click the link in the description and you can start your free fly tying tutorials today. So let's get into the tying. I've already got a size 20. It's actually a dry fly hook because the, the fine wire is a nice match for this pattern. And it's, uh, it's a barbless hook, and this one's by Fish On. Onto that, I've already threaded a 2mm silver tungsten bead. Um, I really like silver, particularly for pressured waters where fish might see a lot of flies. So it's, it can be quite a nice little dodge. It is possible if you get into it, if you want to add your own colours to stuff with like pen or whatever else, you can actually get your own customised colours. And something we talk about quite a lot in the book is the ability to make your flies look different from everybody else's. And so some of these small changes can sometimes give you an advantage. The other materials, um, there's not many in this fly, as I say, it's a very simple pattern. Uh, the body's gonna be um, a chartreuse wire in 0.18 millimeter diameter. Nice sort of insecty looking color. Um, and you can tie this pattern either with or without tails. Now for this one, I'm going to focus on a tailless pattern. Um, one of the reasons for that is it, I like this to sit within the sort of the midge pupa um, sort of genre as well as the, the sort of the upwing nymphs. Um, and basically, the the only difference that you need to be aware of there is adding tails for upwing nymphs or leaving them out for the midge pupa. But in my part of the world, and in fact everywhere that there's water. Um, Midge pupae and midge larvae are a big, big part of trout's diets, particularly in the winter when there's maybe less um, other things hatching. So I'm going to get started now. Um, tying with Ultimate Tying Silk uh, in a yellow shade, just because I like the, the way that, that shines through um, into the under, through the underbody to the surface. And just catching on like that. Doesn't matter if the bead sort of moves around a little bit, just once you're getting started. I like a reasonable bed of that silk because it is quite slippery stuff, so it's worthwhile, you know, making sure that you've got a good sort of grip onto the shank. If you wanted to, you could add a dab of glue at this stage, um, but I think we'll we'll probably finish off with something that'll you know make sure that that's um, a very robust sort of pattern. I'm going to catch in the wire with a soft wrap on top of the shank, and then I'm going to bind that down in touching turns. And that gives me not only the silk sort of shade shining through, it also gives you a bit of that glint of that wire as well as, as part of the underbody. And because this is a, a sort of a slightly midgy pattern, I can take it just to the start of where that, that bend begins to curve around. I'll come back up in fairly open turns because we don't need to add more silk than is absolutely necessary. And I'll just build up a little bit of a dam of thread there just to stop that bead kicking about quite as much. Again, we'll add a little collar to really cut, put that in place very soon, so don't need to worry too much about that. You can go for this pattern, you can go with fairly touching turns. You don't have to be too sort of open to get a, like a mega segmented effect. But what it does, what it actually does is it creates a really nice, slim, compact body 
that's also pretty dense. So it will cut through, even though it's a small pattern and it's only got a two millimeter bead on, it will actually cut through that surface and sink pretty quickly without being an absolute, you know, bomb. And although it's a little bit difficult to tell, you can see the sort of size of the jaws. It's actually, it's actually a really quite a small mouthful. It's a, it's a very, you know, small fly. It's a, a little speck of a thing, really. Just catching that thread in a little bit shy of where the bead sort of uh, joins that uh, thread down that we made before. And then because, you know, I quite like the scissors that I've bought, so I'm just going to fatigue this, this wire off um, to save those scissors. And at the same time, it leaves a really short, you know, almost invisible stub of wire. If you cut it, there's always a little bit of wire that you need to kind of either catch down or cover up with your thread wraps, but when you fatigue it off like that, it's a basic trick, but it's a very, very useful one. Um, so the, basically the final move, we're already pretty much to the end of the fly here, is just to come in with a little very, very small pinch, a little scrape almost of mole fur. And again, it's just really a suggestion of a thorax, if anything. Press that onto the thread. Dub it around. You don't have to be too tight with this. You can just slide that mass of dubbing up the thread. Just a few turns. You really don't need a lot. I'm going to take that off. Then what I tend to do, come in with um, whatever fly tying glue, super glue based um, fixative. And just applying a small dab of that fixative right close up to the last bit of thread just before it touches the shank. And what that lets you do is when you drop on a whip finish, you can come below the level of that glue so it's not you're not dragging that glue through the important part, the hook of your whip finish tool. And just cross that thread over. The, the trick is getting that first turn to lay on, but as soon as you've got that on, it's easy then to come in and just keep going with the turns until that uh, glue disappears into the collar. Slide that up. Support these fine wire hooks particularly, if you're bearing down with these gel spun threads, uh, they're really strong, so you can snap the hook very, very easily. So what you want to do is support that with your thumbnail in the opposite direction and just pull down. And that helps you to hide some of those turns inside, sort of basically in the gap, almost underneath the back of that beveled edge that you get in the beads. And they're pretty much done. Um, I like to come in and actually either use a sharp blade to just sort of sever the thread or to go in with the V of the scissors and slide it up as close as I can and use that pushing mo uh, movement to actually sever the thread rather than snipping. Because sometimes if the jaws don't cross over perfectly, it'll just fold the thread, thread around, particularly with these very robust, though fine, um, GSP type threads. And that's it. One of my absolute favorite um, patterns, a subtle little nymph, grayling love it, trout love it. Um, whether it's clear water or cold water. Very, very simple, um, but very effective. So I'll give it a go.